Welcome to TV20 News. We are Cleveland. I'm Leah Haslidge. A serious discussion took place at Cleveland Marshall College of Law at Cleveland State University, and the topic affects everyone. Some of the brightest minds from the medical, pharmaceutical, legal, and rehabilitation worlds came together in the moot courtroom to discuss the opioid crisis we are currently facing. Professor Brownie Lewis, director of the Center for Health, Law, and Policy at the Cleveland Marshall College of Law, put together the program and the panel. Well, we wanted to get different perspectives on the opium crisis because it's hit Ohio so hard and everybody's passing uh, the buck as far as who's responsible. So for tonight, we want to get the medical perspective, the legal perspective. We have a pharmacist who will be presenting. We have a substance abuse counselor. So we have people from the beginning of the problem all the way to the solution. One of the presenters was Cleveland Municipal Court Judge Lauren C. Moore. Judge Moore, who also appears on TV20's Cleveland Justice, spoke on the importance and value of the drug court program, which puts offenders on the road to sobriety and a clean record. So they do well, and that's one of the things that incentivizes them, because they don't want to let people down. And when you see somebody every week, you see somebody several times a week, you do get a report, and they do cheer, we do cheer each other on, and we want to make sure they do. Professor Lewis believes the solution for the opioid epidemic starts with the conversation and education and to keep the conversation going. She will be hosting more of these panel discussions, much like this one. We want to focus on um, teenagers, so the next one we're going to bring in the, the, the public schools. We're going to bring in athletic departments because a lot of this has come from uh, students who are hurt while they're playing a sport and then they end up taking pain medic medicine and end up addicted. So we think that component has been lost, so we want to bring in something that's going to focus on our children. For more information on the upcoming discussions, visit CSU's Cleveland Marshall College of Law website at law.csuohio.edu. Congratulations are in order for Mr. Ronald Bakeman, who was sworn in as the new Internal Affairs Superintendent for the Cleveland Division of Police. And I will faithfully, and I will faithfully honestly, honestly, and impartially, and impartially discharge the duties of and discharge the duties of Internal Affairs Superintendent of Internal Affairs Superintendent State of Ohio State of Ohio during my continuance in said office during my continuance in said office Congratulations. Family, friends, and colleagues gathered in the Red Room of Cleveland City Hall to watch Mr. Bakeman take the oath. Afterwards, Police Chief Calvin Williams offered his congratulations. Mr. Bakeman went through a, an extensive process. Uh, we actually have been <laughs> trying to get this position filled for about a year and a half, uh, not for lack of trying, but really to find the best suited candidate. And I think we found that candidate, Mr. Ronald Bakeman. In his speech, Mr. Bakeman made a promise to the public on how he will perform his job. That as we embark on this journey with the internal affairs, that every decision will be made solely on the facts and the law, that no decision will be based on race or position. That's the commitment that I made to the mayor and to the police chief when I interviewed to the job, and that's the commitment that I make to the citizens of Cleveland, Ohio. Thank you. Patrol Officer David Lamb of the Cleveland Division of Police was recently promoted to the rank of Sergeant and was sworn in by Mayor Frank Jackson. Sergeant Lamb is also with the Ohio Army National Guard. Congratulations, Sergeant Lamb. Mark your calendars for the annual Sustainable Cleveland Summit on September 19th and 20th at the Cleveland Public Auditorium. If you're interested in attending the neighborhood workshops, here's a list of the upcoming dates.
For more information, visit SustainableCleveland.org. They may have moved to a new location, but their mission remains the same, helping Ohioans find work. One, two, three. Now that the ribbon has been cut, the new Ohio Means Job Center at 1910 Carnegie Avenue is officially open for business. The Cleveland Cuyahoga County Workforce Development Board celebrated the grand opening of the new job center. City officials and organizers say the new facility will help make it easier for people looking for work. Uh, this location, this new location, is, will consolidate a lot of uh, agencies and activities so it makes it easier on the, uh, the client, the customer that you serve. It's very convenient, centrally located. It's an exciting day. We wanted to get the word out that we're here. We have services for anybody that needs help finding a job, uh, getting on a career path, uh, finding job training. Uh, last year we uh, helped about 4,000 people get a job, uh, about 500 people get into job training. Uh, we have a young adult resource room for young adults who uh, need some help with either getting their high school diploma, a GED, career training, or just help finding a job. Mayor Jackson also gave Ohio Means Jobs a proclamation from the city. Thank you. The Greater Cleveland Food Bank hosted their 26th annual Harvest for Hunger campaign kickoff event with the goal of providing thousands of meals for those in need in our community. This year, you know, the theme of the campaign is really all about making tough choices. Uh, we don't have, want people to have to make the choice between choosing for food or choosing for medicine, uh, choosing for food or transportation, um, and even choosing for food and utilities in this, in this winter weather that we've been having. So really, you know, we want people to donate for every dollar that you donate to the Harvest for Hunger campaign. We can provide enough food for four nutritious meals. This is one of the largest food and funds drives in the country and it benefits four food banks in Northeast Ohio. Uh, the Greater Cleveland Food Bank is the coordinator of the campaign and our goal this year is to raise enough for 22 million meals. You know, the Greater Cleveland Food Bank last year alone served enough for 55 million meals and the need continues to be there. Uh, nearly 50% of the people that we serve are children or seniors. Also throughout the spring, you'll be able to donate at your local supermarket. It's one of the easiest ways to give. If you would like to start a Harvest for Hunger drive at your business, school, or community, or to donate or volunteer at the food bank, go to greaterclevelandfoodbank.org. Mayor Frank Jackson recently met with a group of people who had a lot to celebrate. A delegation of the Cleveland chapter of the Lithuanian American community stopped by the mayor's office as they were celebrating the 100th anniversary of the resumption of the Lithuanian independence. Back in 1795, Lithuania was basically wiped off the face of the map by the partition between Russia, Austria, and Germany. And uh, it disappeared and became a part of the Russian Empire where it remained until 1918. After the delegation met and took photos, Mayor Jackson presented them with a proclamation commemorating their celebration. Likewise, the Lithuanian delegation gave the mayor some gifts, including a sash representing their country, a commemorative plaque, and a very tasty treat. Well, we gave them one, uh, a cake, which is a traditional Lithuanian cake. It's actually called uh, skruzdelinas, which doesn't sound so good. It sounds like anthill because it sort of looks like an anthill, but it's very delicious. It's dipped in honey, and it's crispy, and um, I, I hope he enjoys it. Among those in the delegation was Ingra Bublis, who was an honorary general consul of the Republic of Lithuania. Bublis says that because of their history, all Lithuanians can appreciate the value of freedom. A lot of people do not know what it means not to have freedom, but Lithuanians do know because they were occupied for 50 years. And freedom today is a joy. And celebrating 100 years, you know, um, our cities in Lithuania, the countrysides, every, the youth, everybody is so enthusiastic. And we're so happy that Lithuanians all over the world are reacting the same way. And we're so honored that our mayor received us today on this special occasion. Dr. Victoria Stankos believes there's a reason most Lithuanians settled in Cleveland when they first immigrated over. We need Cleveland. 
because it was a settlement to provide homes for the soldiers who had lost them in a revolutionary war. And Ohio, well, Cleveland in particular, was open to all immigration, and it was freedom. For more information on the Cleveland chapter of the Lithuanian American community, visit their website at lithuanian-american.org. You can also check out their Facebook page at Lith Clavus. The city of Cleveland has a rich history and we want to test your knowledge. Our trivia question for this week, twice our Cleveland Indians have won the World Series. What two years were they? A, 1920 and 1975. B, 1920 and 1952, or C, 1920 and 1948? We'll have the answer when we return. I'm Jenny Garth, and as a mother of three, I know kids worry about a lot of things. Getting enough food to eat shouldn't be one of them. But here in America, that is a real worry for one in five children. This is unacceptable and something Feeding America is working to solve. Through a nationwide network of food banks, Feeding America serves virtually every community in the United States, including yours. See how you can help your community. Visit feedingamerica.org. Together, we can solve hunger. Together, we're Feeding America. Welcome back to TV20 News. We are Cleveland. I'm Leah Haslidge. This week's trivia question, twice our Cleveland Indians have won the World Series. What two years were they? A, 1920 and 1975. B, 1920 and 1952. C, 1920 and 1948. The answer is C, 1920 and 1948. Much like the block C. <laughs> Well, the City of Cleveland, along with the American Heart Association, turned the City Hall Rotunda red to bring heart health awareness for women in the community. The event was also a health fair which supported the American Heart Association's Go Red for Women campaign and was part of the city's Black History Month events. The Go Red for Women movement started about 14 years ago here in Cleveland and around the country as a way to really educate and inspire women to take steps to lower their risk of heart diseases and stroke. According to the American Heart Association, heart disease is the number one killer of women throughout the world. So typically heart disease has been thought of as a man's disease or something that more of an elderly population would get. Um, but the truth is, unfortunately, everyone's at risk. And women are sometimes more likely to put their needs above others, ignore symptoms, ignore warning signs. And so the movement really encourages them to educate themselves about what the warning signs are, how to reduce their risk, and then also to encourage others to do the same. Because we know when we do something together, it's a lot easier to tackle. Natoya Walker Minor, who is the Chief of Public Affairs for the City of Cleveland, spoke at the event, telling the crowd that it's everyone's responsibility to protect their heart. So each of us has a responsibility to educate and to inform, ride a bike, Get a walking partner. Get an accountability partner. Look at what you're eating. Measure what you're eating. Make sure that your plate is colorful. The more colorful your plate is, the better that intake is for your body. Ward 14 Councilwoman Jasmine Santana said heart disease is especially prevalent in the Hispanic community and then shared a personal story about her sister. Just about a year ago, my sister silently was experiencing heart problems. She didn't want to share it with the family. And so I know she was a little distance, a little different, but I couldn't understand. So as she struggled with this, what she stated is that she kept it away from the family because she couldn't understand how a 27-year-old, pretty healthy young lady could be undergoing heart problems. 
The keynote address was given by University Hospital's cardiologist, Dr. Dina Sperano. Dr. Sperano said significant advances in the treatment of those with cardiovascular issues has come a long way, thanks in part to the Go Red for Women campaign. So we owe a lot of the success to the fact that we are now applying standard guideline medical therapies and medications to women equally as men. We owe a lot of that to an increased awareness amongst our medical community and also uh, amongst the population at large. So that's tremendous progress. For more information on the American Heart Association and the Go Red for Women campaign, visit heart.org. When a student from the Jane Addams Business Career Center had some serious questions for Mayor Frank Jackson, she came up with a brilliant plan to get his attention. Here's TV20 reporter Dan Monroe with more. What's the best way to get to the mayor's ear? If you're Denisha McKinney, a junior in Jane Addams Culinary School, you invite the mayor over for a four-course meal lunch at the school's student-run restaurant, The Executive Grill. McKinney told me the idea for the lunch stemmed from a rumor she heard about her beloved school. I was hearing rumors that our school could possibly be in close. So I took it upon myself and invited him to lunch at my school, Jane Adams, the culinary program, and to sit down and talk to see if the rumors that I was hearing were true. Because my senior year is coming up and I don't want to have to go to a different school when I turn to when I get into the twelfth grade. I want to stay here. Two other students attended the luncheon, along with some parents and grandparents, and Jane Adams' principal, Diane Grandin. Grandin says she's very proud of McKinney and the rest of the student staff for putting on a great luncheon. Oh, I am very proud of my students today. My culinary arts students did a great job with the dinner with the mayor, but my girls that were sitting at the table with him had some great questions for him. They were waiting for his insight, and I think they got a lot of insight today, and they're thrilled. These were students who a lot of them are in my government classes. Several of them are working to graduate this year, which is great. And so they really wanted to ask some pertinent questions that they felt like um, he could answer. During their hour-long meal, Mayor Jackson spoke with the students, answering each of their questions, including the rumored closing of Jane Adams. McKinney said the discussion was open and honest and that she even learned something afterwards. I learned a couple things. I learned that it's just not they're going to close our school. They won't just, they just have to, have to come to a meeting and con conversate about what, what's really going on. The School of Culinary Arts at Jane Addams teaches more than just cooking and baking. Students learn all aspects of running a restaurant, from cleaning to preparing meals to serving guests. We're looking at getting our children certified and being able to go over to a lot of culinary programs after graduation and completing that culinary degree that a lot of them want. And we teach everything from washing the dishes in a restaurant to how do you make different cuisines for different cultural times. For more information on the Jane Addams Business Career Center and the School of Culinary Arts, visit their website at clevelandmetroschools.org forward slash AdamsBCC. At the Jane Addams Business Career Center for TV20, I'm Dan Monroe. Thanks, Dan. If you would like to try the food the students have prepared, their restaurant, the Executive Grill, is open to the public most Wednesdays and Thursdays from 11 a.m. to 1245. Be sure to check their website for details. As part of the City of Cleveland's Black History Month celebration, local business owners were honored for their commitment to the community. We want to take this opportunity to show our appreciation for the work that's been done in the City of Cleveland by black business owners, entrepreneurs, those who have, have picked up the mantle to show others that uh, you can be successful um, leading and driving business in the city of Cleveland and being productive. Renee Johnson, owner of Renee's Dry Cleaners, Kent Doc Hill, owner of Doc and Lenny's Restaurant and Catering Services, and Joseph Hawthorne, owner of Carnegie Auto Wash and Detail Center, were all recognized at the program and awarded a commemorative plaque. For years, Hawthorne has been looking out for the betterment of each of his employees. It's cold, it's wind chill, 20 below. You have to provide. Sometimes they don't have the gloves, they don't have a meal, they don't have the clothing. So we work with the communities around Sutton Hardware, other community business, small business, and they all chip in and we all try to be a part 
So what we do is try to show the guys how to stand up and keep standing. Doc Hill of Doc and Lenny's calls it a great honor to be recognized by the city of Cleveland during Black History Month and says he knows the importance of giving back to the community. You know, we do uh, the mentoring at the uh, PNC Connection, uh, did the kids in the kitchen program there. I had opportunity, uh, which I haven't taken advantage of yet, was to program uh, Bedford Heights. They wanted me to come out and teach, uh, you know, some of the young kids out there. Uh, we, uh, me and my wife, we always try to give back. You know, that's, uh, it starts with the youth. In celebration of Black History Month, one of Cleveland's own was letting it whip at the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Back in 1983, the Daz Band shot to the top of the R&B charts with their Grammy award-winning hit, Let It Whip. The Kinsman Daz Band took to the main stage at the Rock Hall Museum for a high-energy dance party. Stay tuned to TV20 to see the Kinsman Daz Band performance in its entirety. Well, that's all for your TV20 News. We are Cleveland. I'm Leah Haslidge. Up next, we'll have Christian Patterson with the Inside Sports Report. Thanks for watching.